Starfleet Underground. Every week, we'll take a look at the latest Star Trek news and then check out a current or classic episode of Star Trek. The Cerritos battles an AI-powered ship in a race to stay employed. Mariner saves the day, but so does Jax and the entire Kelly class. Plus, Star Trek Prodigy is back. Dal and crew are doing good deeds, but the Protostar is a weapon when it hooks up with a com relay station. What are you talking about, our new crew member? You said it's a melanoid? Seriously? It's one of those, what do you mean it's, it's Murph's cousin? He's stationed on board the ship? Did the translators update so people can understand what they're saying? He sounds so cute. Yeah, yeah. I love how he talks. Yeah, but there's one bad thing. He's supposed to be helping Rocky and his engineer, and he didn't know what a hot dog filter was, so he removed it. And so now the replicators <laughs> are spitting out burnt I hot got, dogs at everybody. I got so many hot dogs right now in engineering. You can't believe it. If oh, only we had some geez. mayonnaise or some ketchup. Oh. You know, I don't want to say anything about Ensign Rosella, but she's been in the galley trying to catch hot dogs in her mouth. I well, don't know what she's trying to impress upon people. You're supposed to catch them in your buns. <laughs> yeah, but she's Which not. buns? <laughs> oh my god, I don't want to see that image. So I just um, got a really horrible image in my head. Yeah, so could someone get to the melanoid to go ahead and reapply the hot dog filters? Because it's it's getting really, Please. really big in there. And I heard that the ensign now has like a group of followings. They got a whole bunch of guys cheering her as she catches them. <laughs> so uh, I don't know what that's all about. Oscar my wiener. <laughs> she, she oh really my god! <laughs> it has a first name. It's M A C A. Uh, wait, I know we're not sponsored by them. I'm sorry. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Go ahead, blue hair. Just I, I get it. Purple. Yeah, uh, purple I, purple okay, hair. I gotta turn the lights up. Purple hair. And stop pointing at the light. I know the light is on. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, this show is being brought to you by Section 31 and our Patreon people, as well as our customers who listen to us every week. So thank you for that, too. If you're under age of 12, no, 13, no. 18. 18, sir. That's it. I don't know what section of the galaxy we're in. So many different ages of maturity. It, it's just oh, 18. Just... It, it, it's it's a rounding error, sir. Oh, that's right. We're, we're <laughs> it's Earth. a rounding error. That's right. We're broadcasting only to Earth. Last week, didn't we broadcast over to the, like, the whole Gamma Quadrant by accident? Mm-hmm. And, and they have various ones. I mean, I was like told off that our age for, for hearing material like that, you, man, is... <laughs> Yeah, there are different ages of consent uh, throughout the yeah. world. So yeah. yeah, so use your discretion. It's the consent part that's important. Yeah, and the is. Delta Quadrant was like, oh no, you better Delta don't. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and they, like they we've were. said before, like this show isn't made for some adults, so use discretion. And then we had that Ferengi come on board and look at our merchandise that we sell in our store, and he's like, hmm substandard product i can give you much more for cheaper profits it's like no our stuff is high quality that's why we charge the way we do our stuff is definitely better and then he gave me a proof of concept t-shirt oh, i washed Jesus. it once and a thing turned into a cheese rag i swear and he to said, god frank you did not read the tag it said do not get the shirt wet <laughs> oh my god. leave my ship why do frankie always have to share their opinions we don't care no no, well, he didn't like what I told him. Like we used to say in the service, tell him like opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one. <laughs> and they usually stink. <laughs> so <sighs> he was not a happy camper. Well, any, not if they're gay. Any rate. Um, oh my. Where was I? Oh yeah, we're starting the show. Hey, I'm here with the full crew compliment today. I have my, and she impresses me almost every time she speaks. It's that's my science officer. You are so sweet. I really appreciate it. Hi, I'm Heather Ferris. I'm the science officer. And Captain, you'll have to excuse me. I have to run down and get these triples. They're unspayed, unneutered, and they're going after the hot dogs. Oh, no. I'm going to be like that ship. That's a horror movie right there. Yeah, we get it. Security, lock down all doors to the galley. 
I mean, Tribble's going after wieners? Come on. They're unspayed and unneutered. That's the important part. Everyone keep your pants on. Yeah, we do, we, we do <laughs> oh not God. want We don't want that ship to go. It will happen like And, and put some pants on the Tribbles, for Christ's sake. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> it's not good, especially that naked one that we can't seem to get to grow the hair back. <laughs> oh. And next on our crew roster is the person who is just amazing at handling foreign species that come on board the ship while he's programming. How the hell does he do this? I have no idea. Is my number one. Hey, I'm Patrick. I'm number one. I'm the computer guy and the foreign species liaison. It's just a hands-on job. <laughs> That's how. Okay. And next is our engineer who does such stuff that I just have to call it magic. I don't know how the hell he does what he does, but he does it so well that it's just like magic to me. You know what's magic just, is making those hot dogs disappear quickly. Oh, my yeah. God. What's the name yeah. of that instant again? Ooh, baby. <laughs> she's going to be down there. So <laughs> Hi, everybody. She's, I'm, I'm she's locked in until the triples don't go in. <laughs> I'm Rocky. I'm engineer of the show and the ship. Happy to meet you. And uh, my shout out this week is to Science Division. That's uh, science underscore division on Instagram. They've got these wonderful series of photos of Tribbles doing things in costume for Halloween-ish type months. You know, cosplaying Tribbles are wonderful. Yeah, they actually are. Wait, I just got a notification that the Ensign heard about your endowment and they just yelled challenge. <laughs> <laughs> to see she could swallow that hot dog so you might get a visit later so Gross. oh goodness I, I, I could say a comment again about buns but i'll keep it to myself <laughs> yeah so just just be get a aware. shield just get a shield <laughs> shield raise shields <laughs> now that um, would be funny i'm also excited uh there's another update on the voyager documentary they're still shooting and, and uh working on it and uh soon they're gonna hit heavy editing Oh, that's going to be really cool. That should be fun when that comes out. And then I noticed... Uh, I mean, we've been waiting for how long on that? Oh, no. It takes a while to do these things. I mean, it's it's a lot of work to cut these things together. And, you know, when you're crowdfunded, you just can't hire anybody to work on them. So it takes a certain person to work on these things. So I appreciate that. Wrong cabin. This is not the chief's quarters. You got to go down the call more. Yes, Ensign. Do I sound like the chief? They're looking for you. <laughs> it's your big resident voice, sir. Um, it attracts them anyway. You're going to be getting a visit from the instant. Apparently, she's going to try that's, to that's exciting. challenge. Yeah, well, don't make her until we're done because we need your <laughs> skills here. Uh, also, I noticed uh, during this week, uh, Bob Picardo's officiating weddings. Oh, yeah, I saw that. That was really fucking cool. That's really awesome. That, that was awesome. He's such what? a cool guy. Oh, yeah. He's Just really like cool for guy. fun or is it? No, for real. No, he officiated an actual wedding and uh, it looked like they were in cosplay. Yeah, huh. for real. He's a really nice guy. Every time I meet him, he's just a marvelous individual. I wonder how much he charges for that. Hmm. Why you didn't get married? No, I just want to have him there. <laughs> just have him around. He, yeah. he might be, you might be able to afford that. I mean, they're actors. They work for money, you know, peanuts. <laughs> they work on scale. So. Yeah. <laughs> that would Under be funny. Remy, Pazor, Latido. Yeah, you could have him, you know, do the opera singing on scale. Yeah. So, I bet you oh, we could throw out it. a number and we could have them on the podcast next week. <gasps> if we, if we had a number to throw out. We don't, yes. but if we had one, we probably could. Man, <laughs> I wish Starfleet used money. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> well, maybe we so can give them easier. something equivalent that low actors love. Love and recognition. Publicity. Speaking of people on the on the podcast, our friend yeah. Tori Mel has agreed to come on the show. We just got to get him scheduled because he's in Hawaii. Yay. And that's a, a big time difference. So, hmm, How's the Wi-Fi connection over there? You know, I don't know. Mm. But, Tori yeah. is fucking hysterical. Tori's He's great. An awesome individual. Oh, cool. Okay, since we're moving right along here, I have a question for you, number one. What? Do we have any corrections from last week? Let me check subspace. <laughs> nope, all clear. Oh, the, again, another flawless podcast. It's like what's between your ears. <laughs> Very funny. He heard you. What? What do you mean he's not answering the door? He's doing work. Just go ahead and see him later. You'll find him in the corridors. All right. Um. Yeah. Thank you for locking your door because um. apparently that ensign couldn't get into your quarters there, Chief. The secret is I'm not actually in my quarters right now. That would work. It's like the old Calgon commercial. Ancient Chinese secret. 
Okay. Um, news wise, let's go ahead and, and start doing a little bit of the news while we're getting on. Cause to this episode today is going to be a double episode. We're actually going to be reviewing two, two, two Star Trek shows on one. So first off is the news articles. I think I said that already. I'm too scared to leave my quarters to get coffee because hot dogs. Heather, what do you, what do you have for us news? <laughs> Uh, I Captain. So this week we had a lot of Star Trek birthdays and I wanted to run down the list to say happy birthday to all of the people in Star Trek on this list. Maybe do like a little uh, happy birthday. No. Your birth- we, we've no, learned no. that singing happy okay. birthday doesn't yeah, work here. No. Oh, okay. Well, the first person is Anthony Rapp. He is in Discovery. His birthday was on October 26, 1971. Ira Bear, which is a lot of people know. He has a lot to do with the show, right? So he is October 23rd, 1953. John Van Sitters is 1023, 1964. And we're going to talk about him a little later on in the show. And Robert uh, Picardo is 1027, 1953. Mm -hmm. Also, we have the winner of the O'Brien Award, Rocky, who Who? was born. I think he's on this ship. (laughs) I never heard of the guy. Yeah, I I think he's on this ship. And he was born (laughs) October 26th. So happy birthday. Thank you. (laughs) You know, actually, the day we're recording this is my mother's birthday. Oh, happy birthday to your mom. (laughs) Yeah, I'd say how old she is, but I don't want to get censored by Section 31. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. No. It would not be good. Also, I saw your vacation pictures and uh, you have a thing going with double women. So that's pretty cool. Ooh, the ensign's not going to like that. <laughs> yeah, but unfortunately, that double picture from according to Quirk, we cannot get it out unless we pay him copyright profits. So ah. nobody's ever going to see that picture, unfortunately. <laughs> Walk softly and carry a tall horgon. <laughs> it was very big horgon. It so- matched what it needed. Yeah. Rocky, what'd you do for your birthday? Did you go in the hologram and I, like have a special program? <laughs> like, I, what'd you do? Did you visit a planet? I aged one more year. <laughs> That's it? That's it. I had to work. Oh, Captain, why did you make him work on his birthday? It's his birthday. That's his present. It's Starfleet. It's a service. He, he uh. loves working on stuff. I mean, last time he got in trouble, he was like, Scotty, great. Now I get a chance to catch up on engineering manuals. <laughs> the guy is just, <laughs> do you love a good manual? <laughs> See? Like book. So. He's like, I started with the instruction manual, then it got interesting, so I went to the technical manual. Oh, yeah. Well, if you got a good instruction manual, always check out the technical manual afterward. <laughs> Look at the degree like right there. Anson manual is pretty good, too. <laughs> Anson oh. Manuel, yes. Oh. <laughs> Just like Patrick was said. reading Man- Anson Manuel the other day. I was like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> It's like oh Rocky's like, I, I, my poker hand is just like my love life. <laughs> it's like, I get a great hand. <laughs> so, <laughs> and is any more birthdays, Heather? Um, I do not see, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of birthdays. Do you really want me to go into it though? Because, no, uh, because it's a one list quarter and... of the population has a birthday at the same time uh, every day. Exactly. So, it might so take we a won't while. Do that. However, who's a person every time he speaks, he feels that somebody's celebrating a birthday because they feel joy. Not really, but hey, <laughs> number one. Anyway, so the Saturn Awards were given out and. Oh, who won? Star Trek Strange New Worlds won for best streaming Woo! series. Congratulations. Awesome. Our best streaming sci-fi series. Nice. It beat The Expanse, For All Mankind, Lost in Space, The Mandalorian, and The Orville New Horizons. That's, that's a lot of good shows. Huge. Holy yeah. cow. That's, that's impressive to be on top of that list. Yeah. That's and very seriously. Ex- congratulations, Strange it, New Worlds. Yeah, because The Expanse is just yeah, a phenomenal. Oh, yeah. New, and, and For All Orville Mankind. is amazing. And The Mandalorian. Know. Mandalorian is huge, yeah. The Mandalorian. Yeah. And I love how Mandalorian's is the last one we mentioned. <laughs> So it's Henry really cool. Lonzo Myers, Akiva Goldsman, and Ethan Peck were on hand to receive the award. And the award was given to them by none other than Jerry O'Connell, Commander Ransom, and Denise Crosby, oh. Tasha Yar. Oh, cool. Yay. 
Also, Star Trek Lower Decks was nominated for Best Animated Series, but it lost to Star Wars The Bad Batch. No, uh-huh. hmm. uh-huh. The Bad Batch was good. But, I mean, uh-huh. yeah, The Bad Batch is great, but come on, Lower Decks. Yeah. I know, Lower Decks is so amazing. Mm. Ah, whatever. But I Strange mean, New Worlds now joins the ranks of um, the of Next Gen and, and Discovery for winning a Best Series Saturn Award. Nice. Cool. That's really freaking cool. I, I, I like that. I thought Boiler's Butthole would definitely clinch the award. But <laughs> <laughs> it didn't. That's, that's probably you have to pay extra for that, sir. Yeah, unfortunately. There's a paywall. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know because I totally forgot about the Saturn Awards here, number one. You guys want to know because New Strange New World had some actor nominations. Yeah. Um, Anson Mount what, for Best Actor, but he lost out to Oscar Isaac for Moon Knight. Jess Bush lost out as supporting actress to Moises Ingram in Obi-Wan Kenobi and Ethan Peck for best supporting actor lost out to Elliot Page in the Umbrella Academy. You know, those are a hell of a competition and yeah. not to be upset about losing to such great talent because Isaac in Moon Knight, the way he had to do multiple schism personalities was kind of like mm-hmm. the orphan child. You know, it was really, really done well. And with yeah. Elliot in his new role, an umbrella. I could see that as well. And the way they handled that transition on that show mm-hmm. was beautifully done. Yep. Beautifully Oops. done. So it was an awesome, awesome competition. And not to be sneezed at, to be, you know, to have nominated against each other. Is, that's, I don't think any, any losers when it comes to that. Speaking about a person that never loses in chief, what do you got? Oh, I lose sometimes, but, uh, you know, that happens. And then we can't find a body. Uh, what I haven't lost is where to find the Star Trek movies. Apparently, starting what? November 1st, HBO is going to have all six of the TOS movies. And, uh, oh, HBO? That includes the director's cut of Star Trek The Motion Picture and all four of the TNG movies. Who the hell did they sleep have- with? <laughs> I know, right? Well, I, I think that's Paramount's fault for pimping them out. I think Paramount has been pimping out the Star Trek movies. So they're not whores themselves. It's Paramount's fault. You know, I can just see <laughs> Paramount standing there with a long raincoat going, you want some Trek movies? I got that Trek movie for you. <laughs> Guaranteed I'm, to I'm, increase your ratings. <laughs> I am really upset because the whole reason why I'm with Paramount is for all the Star Trek stuff. And I don't want to get an HBO account. I don't want to have back. to pay extra I, you know for what? HBO. I, I, I am paying for the HBO Max and uh, I, I think it's worth it. There's a lot of good stuff on there. Um, so when Except I'm not, for House of Dragons, what do they have? Well, right at the moment, I'm not, I'm busy watching other things and trying to work, but I have quite enjoyed the, the HBO Max service. Thank you very much. And they do have some decent movies and different and, shows. And, and they have and some stuff. Star Trek movies, apparently, starting November 1st. Uh, yeah. like, um, Paramount Plus still offering uh, this, the 2009 series of, of films, uh, uh, including Into Darkness. Um, but beyond Star Trek Beyond is on AMC Plus, so yeah, you have to do a little like, bit of digging there. But uh, you can still rent and buy these movies at the usual spots. So they're they're going to be there, and and plus HBO has like what's the matter with John Stewart? Um, oh yeah, yeah, it's got the John Stewart guess, stuff. I mean, I've, I love the uh, a lot of little talk shows and the, stuff. Which the is Westworld cool. stuff was just oh, you know, Westworld it, was phenomenal. It twists my brain a little bit, but I enjoy it. Um, so and there's other things pretty, I've seen on HBO that's just like wonderful. It was pretty good. Um, that's your news for today there, Chief? That's it. Okay, well, I have a moment of sad news. Leslie Jordan, if those of you don't recognize the name instantly, if you've been on social media, you've seen his face all over the place, as well as the little uh, shrinky dig version of him, of Tom Selleck when he was younger. The phenomenal actor, but I don't know if a lot of people are aware that he is a Star Trek connection and he played the Ferengi Cole in Star Trek Voyager season three, the episode false prophets. Oh. And he was born, I think the same day on April 29th, 1955 as Kate Mulgrew. Mm. So mm. there were two special people born on the same day. Um, however, he passed away a little bit of history with him. Not only was he a phenomenal actor and comedian, um, he was born in Memphis and raised in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and made his way to Hollywood with a little bit of money that his mother had pinned to his underpants. And his first landing role was in the 80s 
when he won an Emmy in his role for Beverly Leslie on Will and Grace. So I just want to give a moment of silence because this guy was literally a gift that kept giving during COVID. His his imitation that he did of different styles and, and dressing like the Kardashians and all this stuff he posted. He was just a joy to look at. So if you have a chance to go on his Instagram account, go ahead and check his past posts. He, he was really a bright light in a dark world. So we're going to give a moment of silence for the passing of this individual. Okay. Thank you. I thought I smelled gin and regret. <laughs> yeah. and now we're going to go ahead and get started. So I understand this is going to be everybody's favorite day because not only do we have two different synopsis to give we get two different people giving them but you? i don't know which one of you guys are first whoop, whoop. I am. number one is so number one number one of course is number one okay star trek lower deck season three episode 10 the stars at night teaser star date 58499.2 sritas is in repair at the deckless station after the brain kicked our ass thankfully we were saved by a new texas class ship freeman has to answer to starfleet command Project Swing By was discovered the Breen incursion, so it wasn't a failure, but Admiral Wong says the unprofessionalness of her crew left them unprepared. Admiral Buena Amigo, more like Admiral Buena Fuck You, defended the Cerritos as essential, but his Texas class ships are superior and recommends decommissioning the Cali class altogether. Wong agrees to shutter the Cali class. No, don't That go. whole thing. It's like, wait, what? And it's like he's just throwing Freeman under the bus. Well, that's why I said that's Admiral Buena. Fuck you, not Amigo. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> he's not playing very fairly. That, that was uncool. Yeah. No. He's not being a good friend. No. And it's a way he's just kind of smug. He gets like insta smug. He's like, they're superior in every way. It's like, really? <laughs> really? I, so, I was upset that everyone's saying that Operation Swing By was a waste of time. I thought, in theory, it was a great idea. I agree. And yeah. I didn't think it was a waste of time for the first one. I think you still need to check up on people just in case, you know. Thank you. Well, Maintain also, relations once in a while. It's a good thing. And how's an automated yeah. ship's going to do that? Automated ships don't bring the personality. No. So how are they going to do from space? You cool? We cool? I'm out. <laughs> Like, right. What the hell? Wasn't Buen Amigo the one that uh, suggested the uh, that whole trip? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was the one that suggested from the go to that planet that Picard fixed by separating the dealers, you know, from the yeah. people. So it's something's fishy with Buen Amigo. Yeah, I have yeah. to agree. I thought it was hilarious when they said they were going to shutter this California class ship because I immediately thought that they were going to say right after that, and we're going to send Freeman to Starbase 80. Oh, that would have been funny. Damn, Starbase 80? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> that would have been funny. That would have been something. <laughs> the entire class of Cali ships to go with the Texas class. I, you know what I'm upset about? I'm upset about Starfleet Command sucking into the media coverage because that's not the entire story no they didn't try to investigate the entire you can't assassinate the entire crew of the cerritos and their careers because of this one little story because of a hit job basically it was fucked up it was well i mean you can if you've been trying to do that for the last how many episodes yeah shh spoiler oh yeah well it was it was yeah it was kind of really messed up I agree. And the look on Freeman's face is like, you want to decommission all of the Cali class? And there's like a shitload of them. So exactly how many, we're not sure yeah. until the end it's of the like show. The but... entire <laughs> class of ships because of one crew. It's also yeah. fucked up. Yeah, it is. It is. I just can't believe that this Starfleet Command is, is you know, except that then when you watch Star Trek Picard, Starfleet Command and, and Star Trek Picard. Oh, my God. So the sheer uh, fucking yeah. hubris. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Go next one. Act one. Freeman tells Buen Amigo she's going to fight this. The crew finds out quickly Boimler and Tendi worry about being assigned to an outpost while Rutherford is enthralled by the Texas class's AI code. Boimler impersonates Dr. Tana, Ransom, and Shax as he walks in the room wanting Boimler to fix his phaser. Thinking Boimler sees him as a joke, he leaves crying. Tendi and Rutherford ponder Mariner's existence on Starbase 80 and wish they'd been more supportive. Mariner and Petra Aberdeen have stolen a golden idol from the Ferengi to return to the Quelar Historical Museum. Mariner thanks Petra for letting her be her and wonders how their operation is funded. Petra says not to worry about that, which makes Mariner suspicious. 
Back on the Douglas station, Buen Amigo wants to promote Freeman to the fleet captain of all Texas-class ships, but she doesn't want a desk job. She challenges him to a mission race to prove the Texas class is better than Cali. Freeman informs the crew and states that they will have the advantage as the USS Alito is doing this for the first time. The entire crew begins readying itself to prove their worthiness. Rutherford is so distracted by the Texas-class code. Boiler tries to apologize to Shax, but he ain't having it. Admiral Wong starts the race and the Cerritos goes to work while Alito sits there and while Buen Amigo smokes a cigar. The Cerritos makes it to Gallardon first and proceeds to update the outdated systems when the Alito arrives and beams down entire structures. The Cerrito arrives at LT-358, an uninhabited planet, so they think, and start to build an outpost. The Alito beams down the already built structures and speeds away. Tandy tells Ransom she believes she may have found microbial life and they halt building until they can confirm. Turns out it was a false alert and they finish the outpost and head to Achmanic 9. A planet that only phases into our dimension for a couple hours a year. The Alito arrives first and beams down all the supplies, and then the planet phases out before the Cerritos arrives. The Alito wins. Okay, there was a lot of little funny moments in, in this act. <laughs> right at the beginning of the act, of course, Freeman is worried about her crew hearing about the Kelly class getting shuttered. And uh, the cut to the next scene, Boimler's talking about Hans Atal guys uh, saying that Felosian and Tactical's girlfriend's Vedic <laughs> heard that Starfleet commanded shuttering the Kelly class. And, and, and the Tal guy's always that, right, that, right? Yeah, that's the part. That's one of the parts <laughs> that made me laugh. <laughs> That just caught me right up. It was so fast and just go. so ruthless. Just like, bam, there it is. Yeah. Well, like they used exactly. to say back in World War II, loose lips shink ships because people can gather information all over the place. You get little things. That's why in the in the DOD and other areas, they don't they don't have you talk to nothing. So you get somebody shopping and they know that, you know, my boyfriend's in the Department of Defense. He's, he's packing up. Oh, really? Yeah. He had to get all these shots for, you know, the Middle East. Huh. It's a good thing that the Cali class is entrusted with our <laughs> the Federation secrets. Or Seriously, <laughs> that was funny. And the part that made me uh, laugh, I thought was funny, is that you get the the kid down there. I want to see the starship. I want to see starship. And she's like, "Shut up! It's just going to be a dot." <laughs> You know, couldn't see anything. <laughs> and then it beams down. He's like, "Ooh." <laughs> they think <laughs> he's losing his shit. Oh my god, this is awesome. Hi, everybody. I want to wave to you from here. Hi. They can't see that you. That was so funny. That made me laugh. And she's old and jaded. She's just like, they're just going to beam shit down and leave. <laughs> so that was pretty funny. That was. And Buen Amigo just sitting there laughing like a douche. Like, oh, I'm just going to wait. Oh, and yeah. Smoke a cigar while they take off. Oh, yeah. He ended up the, the act with a big maniacal yeah, that, laugh. Oh, that yeah. laugh at the it's end. It's so like evil. evil boss. It's like if we only knew what he looked like in his office with a cigar at the end of the act. Um, yeah. Because we always, everybody's good friend. Yeah, he was a buen amigo. Supposed to be good. Well, yeah, really. We thought he was a buen amigo, but he was not. He seemed to be. I wonder if buen amigo is his real name, or did he change his name to that to be like, hey, I'm everybody's good well, he's friend. He's definitely cast it against yeah, type, well, maybe right? His, 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 his name really was Malo. <laughs> Malo Ombre. <laughs> so maybe that was his real name. Oh, God. <laughs> Admiral, Admiral Douchebag is more like it. I love seeing how Mariner acted like Indiana Jones for a while, where we see her, you know, running away from uh, the, the Aborigines. Well, yeah. And running from the boulders and doing the sweening on the vine and getting the statue. It, it, it was really fun. Well, she got beamed out at that last second, though. That phaser, like, really, yeah. really close to hitting her. Get out of my head, Heather. That's exactly yeah. what I was going to say. <laughs> but yeah, it was really cool to see her kind of, you think, living her best life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's free of Starfleet yeah. now, so she can do what she wants. I, I I love that. She's like, just well, just let them make a big deal of it, and she's like, making a huge deal out of it. And of course, she turns the corner, bam, into the walled off doorway. <laughs> like, oh, you, you shouldn't get cocky. <laughs> that was funny. And they, like like you said, that phaser shot came literally. They beamed. She beamed up at the the last second. Yeah. yeah, I was I was worried about her, you know, beaming, materializing on the pad and having a little scar. And that her, thing like, was like, oh, and that, that thing was, was set one. to kill. You saw how hot that rock was. Yeah, that that rock was heated, you know? So probably because Ferengues hate running because, you know, small legs. 
<laughs> Speaking of heated, Shaq's got a really heated. Oh, that kind of oh, got me yeah. a little bit because he's a his exterior. He's this big, tough guy ready to go into frays and oh, kill he was sensitive much. I he's mean, very, he's very connected to his emotions. Yeah, yeah he you is. know, it, it, he's having trouble with his phaser and he's just looking for help with his phaser. And then he discovers all that. And then he tosses the phaser on the floor. I, I mean, know. if you if you would toss your phaser around like that, maybe it would work better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? And then he leaves his back is all ramrod straight and everything. But meanwhile, his face is, <laughs> you know, and it's like you felt for him. It, it just goes to show people do have feelings and you shouldn't try to yeah. walk in on a room when somebody's impersonating you. <laughs> I mean, and how dare he walk into the room when Boimler was impersonating him? How rude. It's important <laughs> to knock. I always ask you guys to knock when you come into my quarters. And that's why if I ever make... Who? Oh, I think that's... Um, I'm not here. The, oh, she's trying to get to you again. Hide. <laughs> she's being, she's Hide. being very persistent. Well, that's why whenever I make fun of the crew, not that I do, I always have my back <laughs> to the wall so I can see who comes in the room. <laughs> not that I do. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> How you know? often do you make fun of us? What do you say about me? Oh. No, nothing. Okay, I have to do this one little (laughs) segue story, which is really funny. Um, There was this guy who was on a hot day on base, and he was walking around policing up stuff, picking up all the trash and everything. And you had a corporal come up to him and goes, why are you out here in the middle of the day picking up stuff? He's like, because this sergeant major told me that I had to pick things up because of something that I did. And he's like, well, if I was you, I would tell the sergeant major to kiss my ass. The sergeant major was standing. <gasps> <behind him. laughs> okay. The reason why I know this story is because the, that corporal was out behind the barracks moving sand because they have what they <laughs> call sand berms. He was moving a sand hill from one and he picked up a shovel full of sand and walked it over to the next hill and dropped it off. And he's like, I went up to him and says, what are you doing? It's like, I was told to move this sand hill and move it to the other sand hill. This is like, why? And he told me how come <laughs> he said, he, when he said that the sergeant major said that's his job and he wasn't done until the sand was completely moved over. <laughs> oh my God. So yeah, you always want to check behind you before you insult somebody or mimic them. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. But I actually felt sad for Shax. Yeah. You well, know? you know, another thing you should always make sure to check you know, behind you before doing that thing is the Riker maneuver. <laughs> Ransom. Oh, yeah. Ransom did it on the captain's chair. Did you notice that? He swung his yeah, legs over that. the chair and then plopped down the Riker that was, maneuver. Yeah, that was, that was yeah, the, the Cerritos crew is trying to tighten up and get ready to go out and do those the second calls and uh that's his part of the whole thing is yes. is let's command that chair <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> get that leg all over that sucker right there man i don't think uh, moving your leg over the chair has anything to do with the command skills i think you're just a person no, first officer but it looks exactly like what Riker did it's, when he sat yeah, in the captain's yeah. chair i love that that's this little subtle thing that just kind of slipped in and nobody talked about and nobody's mm-hmm. talked about it except outside of the show i, I think that's wonderful because it's like Dude, the balls on that guy! You're like, I know they must be made of steel. Well, and the other thing, those it's those tights, seriously. those pants are pretty tight, right? So I can I can understand having to you know move a little to get in position, but still, <laughs> that's what Dow just, said. Dow says it's tight. He was going to wind up giving moose knuckles to everybody who <laughs> tries to do it. Oh and God. then um, Billups is is asking yes. everybody to do Galaxy class engineering and and do commander data level work. He wants those isolator chips to be a blur. Oh, that was funny. Do you guys know? That's when the part when he was drunk. Yeah. Do you know the episode yeah. he's calling back to? Yeah, that's when everybody had gotten drunk. That was the naked thing, right? Yeah, yeah, and he had to pull. He had pulled all the chips. Isn't that the one your mom was in? Oh. And, no, she was in the following one, okay. and they had to pull all those chips out, and Data had to put it back. Yeah, and that was that was it's just and pretend that's it's a, a game. So the Data chips fell out. Th- that's the Next Generation, uh, the Naked Now, season one, episode three. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, also when they talk about when Cerritos uh, landed at LT three five eight for a split second, I got excited. Until I remembered it's LV2426. Uh, yeah, you got to get your numbers right. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah there, there were no xenomorphs on that planet. No, yeah. and it's like, oh my God, they're going to do an alien. Wait, 
they said LT three yeah. three five eight, which is a totally different number than you know. Yeah. But she yeah. still found micro. Well, thought she found microbial life. Yeah, and it's important. You have to check that. And I'm so surprised that the ship didn't scan from orbit and like log it. No, because obviously, you know, send a probe to make sure you're not affecting microbial life that might be sentient. Well, no. even Tiana said, you know, that kind of stuff really messes with the tricorder. So if it messes with the tricorders that close to it, I imagine the ship can't scan even it. The radiation. Yeah. yeah. Multiphasic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Confuses the shit out of a tricorder. That's the word. <laughs> uh, Quaylar. Does Quaylar ring the bell with anyone? Yeah, I took a bunch of Quaylar back in the day. No, not that <laughs> Quaylar. Maybe it's not supposed to do <laughs> That's drugs. a different type of Quaylar. Isn't that the new drink they came up with at the 10 forward? Ooh, I got to try that. No, this is from The Next Generation, Season 5, Episode 7, Unification Part 1. We see a Quaylar 2 in there. Also, 2, we have a couple other callbacks. Now, none of the planets that they visited, all three planets, this is the first time we've seen all three planets. Oh, okay. uh, but one of the planets is described as one of the Brigadoon type planets that exists outside of reality and only phases into our dimension for a few hours a year. That was a trippy episode. Yeah. Well, it's two references. So it's a, a Star Trek episode. Yeah, that's Aquamanic 9. Well, it's also a reference to a 1947 Broadway musical called Brigadoon about a strange Scottish village. Brigadoon. Thank you. That only exists for one day a year. I'm so glad Patrick's here to like get the pronunciation right. And then the Star Trek episode we're talking about is Deep Space Nine Season 3 Episode 8, Meridian, where the crew starts stumbles on the planet uh, Meridian, wow. located in the Gamma Quadrant. I was going to whisper Meridian just to fuck with you. <laughs> I, it would have worked. That is fucked up. Uh, <laughs> it would have worked. I I'm actually learned something right there. I had no idea that that science fiction story was based on a Broadway musical. Yeah. And it was a I don't strange. know if it was actually based on the musical, but I mean, that's where we see the story. Inspired. Though. Inspired. It's an interesting idea, though. You visit some place that's, that's not there permanently. It only visits once in a while. Yeah. And then the, the whole time crunch of being there and trying to help and then leave in time. That was some cool science fiction back in the day. Well, well there's a new, I think it's on Netflix or maybe it's on Prime, but there's a parody called Schmigadoon. <laughs> which oh, is no kidding. basically the same thing. It's got, it's got Keegan Michael Key in it. Yeah, it was um, Apple TV. Apple oh, cool. TV. Oh, it's on Apple? Okay, yeah. But it's got a lot of good cast in it. Keegan Michael Key is one of the characters. Yeah, right? that was on Apple. Okay, so I guess we can go to the next section now, since according to the Crotometer, we're running a little bit slow. Go ahead. Okay. Act two. In the mess hall, Tendi thinks it's her fault they lost the race because she stopped the build by look finding microbial life supposedly but boyman tells her she did the right thing and made the right call as it upheld the prime directive freeman overhears this and praises tendy for the observation and rushes to her ready room she calls buen amigo and informs him that the Lido's mistake ignoring the prime directive she's going to report it to the council rutherford is going over the ai code when he realizes that it's his code it's the same code badgie uses and that buen amigo is the one who erased his memories he rushes to tell freeman he tells Freeman as she's on the call with Buen Amigo that he knows what he did to him. Freeman realizes Buen Amigo has been setting them up all year, which he admits to. Rutherford tells him, you can't use the code as its emotional processing is unstable. Buen Amigo tells the Alito to destroy the Cerritos and activates its independent controls, making it fully autonomous. The Alito tells him it no longer takes orders from him and opens fire on Buen Amigo's office, killing him instantly. It then proceeds to attack the Douglas Station and activates the two remaining Texas-class ships, the USS Dallas and the Corpus Christi. On Quaylar, Mariner and Petra are about to hand over the idol to the museum, but Mariner decides to stay on the ship to find out who's funding these expeditions. Petra catches her and tells her to go ahead. It's Picard. He gave them a huge endowment. Hmm. Mariner says she wants to return to Starfleet, and Petra tells her about the Cerritos being attacked at Douglas Station. Mariner says they have to help, and they take off to help her crew. The three Texas-class ships assault the Douglas Station, and the USS Van Sitters arrives, but is quickly overwhelmed by the three ships. Freeman hails the Alito, stating that they have Rutherford, and he can delete their code as she goes to warp with them following. As they flee at maximum warp, Freeman asks for suggestions, and Jack suggests e ejecting the warp core, which is ignored by everyone who is talking. Boimler tells them all to shut up and listen to Shaxx. He repeats his suggestion to Freeman, which she says he always says that, but then she realizes it's a brilliant plan. Shaxx rushes to engineering to eject the warp core and is greeted by adulation all along the way. They eject the warp core and it engulfs all three ships in a massive explosion. Boom. <laughs> okay, 
That part, well, okay, I, I got to say It's Starship with Daddy oh, Issues. I mean, oh, it was God. a Starship with Daddy Issues. Jesus. So many things. My favorite part is when, when he stands up, Boiler stands up and says, shut up, you should listen to Shax. And he's like, I, I think we should eject the warp cars. He's like, you always say that. But actually, it's a good idea. And the way everybody lined up. <laughs> it's, it's so funny because yeah. everyone's talking thinking oh. that the, the Cerritos crew is so dysfunctional and maybe they are, but they kind of all got up and got behind like, yeah, let's fucking eject the warp core. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Let's get rid of it. And Shax is going to do it like a hell yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I, I can he, see how they get behind this because fuck it. Let's do it. Shax had tears of joy. Yeah. Like, that's so that's how happy he was. He's running down the corridor. Everyone is lined up cheering him. <laughs> He gives him the command to eject the core. And the look on his face was just pure joy. It was the <laughs> best day of his life, of his career. Oh, that was so funny. It was, I mean, I'm surprised he's oh. able to run down the hallway with that boner. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 I mean, oh the crew would have carried him if they had to. <laughs> Dude, they would have got... They would have done like you did. They would have put little oh. wheels on it, like training wheels. So it can <laughs> <laughs> wheel that sucker on down the corridor. Uh, I... I I, I have to, there's some like questionable writing in this to me because Tendi was like freaking out because she thought she ruined everything by holding up the very thing that Starfleet's all about is making sure we're not affecting sentient life. Uh, she did the right thing and she should be proud of that yeah. and everybody needs to support her. Yeah. And the Lower Decks crew is all supportive. I thought when Mariner was... Uh, upset and everyone thought that they didn't support her as she was leaving her friends were the only ones that were supporting her no the whole yeah. ship supported her i disagree with that this was really i mean even tiana it's, it's not, not tiana not that. even said you did what you had to do like nobody gave her shit everybody supported her everybody was like yeah you did the right thing nobody gave her crap for it yeah no it's, it's not that they didn't the, the crew didn't support them it's that the the person themselves doesn't feel like the crew is supporting them, and I, there's like a blind eye to that. I I that bothers me a little bit because I think these lower deckers are all about supporting the fellow lower deckers, even if it's in that friendly competition with the uh, Alpha crew, you know, or the Delta Shift. <laughs> it was I thought, like you said though, but I do think it was a really nice, you know, that everyone joined in together to celebrate Shaq ejecting the core. And the one other part that I thought was as soon as I saw it, and I'm sure you agree with me, Chief, is when he turned around, when Bonamigo turned around and told the ship it was autonomous. And as soon as I saw that thing, because did you notice? It went red. And I'm sure. But also, <laughs> did you notice, and I'm sure um, Heather saw it, that the display on the Texas class is the same thing that was on the, uh, what is the name of that automated computer You're on the original series? talking about like the M5? The M5, exactly. Yeah. It it's was that the same classic display Star that was Trek. on the M5. Yeah. It's a classic a TOS Star Trek computer screen. The, the the visual lights of blinky lights that makes it look like it's doing things. It's a, it looks like a, a bunch of rectangular lines that flash different colors. And it's a specific look you've never seen anywhere else. It's only been on Star Trek of the original series, these computers. And I love that Lower Decks brings it to the modern era and shows it to us with, with like an yeah, automated for, ship. Uh, for a second, I thought it was, uh, what you call took it over? Uh, Amagon or Am Am Amagon, whatever. Uh, Amicus? Yeah, I oh, thought Amicus okay, had taken yeah. it over. Uh, they uh, use Amicus. You know. well, yeah, that's, it's, that's, it's, that's, com it's a such a computer thing. But um, That might be a spoiler. <laughs> oh, that could be. But, but um, yeah, in the second that he activates autonomous mode, the last thing you want to see is the status lights turn red because that means it's gone evil mode. And that's yeah. just like what happens in science fiction. If you see it light up red all of a sudden, fucking boop, run. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah. Not good. Well, that's why if your Roomba turns red, you shoot it. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. So if your Roomba turns red, just shoot the Roomba right off the bat. And especially when it starts uh, talking about burning your heart in a fire. Yes. I love that he used the same AI code as Badgie. I love this whole thing where Rutherford's the one that wrote the code. It's the Badgie code. Oh, my God. It's like. And didn't Badgie want to burn your heart in a fire, too? Yeah. That was like, I, yeah. It's that, it's that burn your heart in a fire code. I think Badgie was one of my favorite villains of lower decks i wonder i'm kind of concerned about rufferford because he's got a real dark evil side because of the code he yeah writes. to his coding yeah <laughs> he's got to watch that well, coding <laughs> he did that code before they changed his personality you know and he was a pretty 
He was ah, an asshole. That's true. Yeah, he, he pretty much was. And in those yeah. the Texas classes, and then it just like, I, you can't, you can, you're not the boss of me anymore. And, uh, you know, they're trying to come up with solutions. I thought one of the other solutions on the computing side of things, uh, let's throw it into that, you know, logic loop of, uh, it's like, no, I safeguarded it against paradoxes. So you can't even throw a logic loop at, at this AI code. Oh, yeah, that was funny because that's the first thing she says. Can we throw a logic loop can, at can it? Can we pull a Kirk and ask it to think about itself and make it blow up? No, you can't. <laughs> Is there some kind of logic paradox we can throw at it? But the star base, okay, because I've worked in science before, both Patrick and I, before we switched over to command and the areas that we did. A star base should have way more defensive armament than it had on that one. So I don't know why it couldn't really truly defend itself. They were caught with their pants down. They were surprised. Yeah, yeah. they weren't expecting it. These were their ships. I'm always caught with my pants down. You, you just don't yeah. expect Not your computer way. to whip out phasers and, and get you with your pants down. Yeah, and it was, it, was making, <laughs> it was making myths meat out of that, that star base. Uh, yeah. But, but uh, okay, so my last line of this, this act was uh, Shax uh, ejecting the warp core. My note was Shax ejaculates the core. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's funny. <laughs> Shaq ejects you. Oh, that's, that could be a title. <laughs> I mean, he was, he had a really good time ejaculating that core. You don't want to get any Jeffrey's lube on you. No. <laughs> Ew. Jeez. We well, just go shower that off later. Yeah, but it's sticky. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Well, at least it's not the blue sticky one. This is true. <laughs> Did you guys notice that point where that ship comes in at the last second and saves Cerritos? Um, the Federation starship. Did you notice the name uh, USS Van Sitters? Did you realize that that was for John Van Sitters, the uh, person who just had his birthday? No, that was nice. Yeah. That's so nice Van how much they did to him. Van him. Sitters is a big Trekkie himself. He also oversees licensing and business strategy. He has the most control over the Star Trek branded products that more than anyone. But he's not just a bean counter. He's also a creative consultant. And his official title is the Vice President of Star Trek Brand Development. That's actually really cool that they did that. That was a tribute to him, yeah. yeah. I can imagine how excited he was when he watches his show and sees that. Right. Well, he's on Twitter and he posted about it. He was really excited. Well, that's he pretty cool. About it. That's very he cool. He twatted about it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, next, Act 3. Act 3. As Cerrito drifts without a warp core, the Alito shows up having survived the explosion and opens fire. As Freeman is giving orders to abandon ship, a mariner arrives, telling her to belay that order because she's brought help. The Oakland drops out of warp and hails the Cerritos. Freeman says the Alito is too powerful for the Cali-class ship, to which mariner replies, I brought all of them. The entire Cali-class armada fires upon and overwhelms the Alito, saving the Cerritos. Back at the Douglas station, mariner enters the bar and greets her friends. They apologize for not supporting her and says that she needed a taste of civilian life and is glad to be back in Starfleet. And he gets a new study buddy, Commander Chalin. Shax tells Boimler that he gave him everything he ever wanted and is now part of the bear pack. Mariner hugs Freeman. Freeman apologizes for not trusting her. Mariner says she needed the time to find herself and is ready to get back on the right path and asks for Ransom to be her mentor, much to his dismay. Ramsey addresses the crew of the Cali-class ships and tells them that they kicked Impossible's ass today. And apparently I missed this, but if you watched after the credits... There was patchy. I, I saw, saw it. it. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh my God. It. I didn't, I never I watched it. The, oh, I feel horrible now. I need to see that. Mm -hmm. There was a part where there's the debris that was out there where Shax had ripped the implant off of Rutherford's face and a ship comes by. You don't see what type of ship it is. And it beams the implant into wherever it's going. But as it's doing it, the reflection inside Rutherford's um, eyepiece is badgy. And he's getting yeah. an evil grin. There is a rumor. I have no idea if this rumor is true. It might be false. But it's a rumor that there is a potential peanut hamper and badgy combo. The person in the, the ship could have been peanut hamper and agamus. And they got badgy. And that might be a combo. We might be seeing in the next season. Mm, that's dangerous. That would be hell of a villain. I Wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah. I would be so happy if they did yeah. that. <laughs> Well, uh, there's I don't definitely know. a frightening AI aspect to this world, but isn't there? there'd be one flaw. All three of them have type A personalities. 
Which means <laughs> maybe that will be their charge. maybe that will be their downfall. Yeah, there's a good possibility. Okay, the part that gave me the big giggles and thrills actually was when all the Cali class is like, and, and Boiler yes. tried in one breath to name all of the ships that showed up. Oh wow, I wrote them I all down. Should- I shed a tear. You wrote them down. I wrote them all down. I thought thinking oh I was going to read them out loud, but it's like, there's no way. Cause he read those things so quickly. I wonder how many takes it took him to get through all of those. <laughs> it's just I so it funny. Almost it's every like city the, in California. It was. And then at the end, the, the, the other, the Cali class captain gets on the line and, and they, I mean, they all, the Merced reported and the Carlsbad reported and the Inglewood reported. And so it was like, wow, they all came in at once. Yeah. The, 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 the Alhambra, the Durango, um, Durango, the, that's yeah. Colorado, sir. Yeah, did I say Durango? <laughs> Alhambra. Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah, Alhambra. Alhambra. Oh, Alhambra. I didn't have my coffee. And they all showed up, and I just thought that was so funny. And that poor little <laughs> Texas-class ship just tried to fight its way and couldn't do it. And it, it, it was destroyed, finally, by all of those ships. I just thought it was cool. Oh, did you see? The, oh, I, I'm, I'm clapping here, right, because I was excited. Is when... <laughs> When um, Tendi saw the new person, remember her? Talen? The Vulcan? Talen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that yeah. was the one that said that she was too crazy. <laughs> Do you remember she, what episode she was on? I, I, it was like, yeah, that was a while back, wasn't it? I was waiting yeah, to see her. Was. We haven't seen her this entire time. No, no. it was a uh, Lower Deck Season 2, Episode 9, Wage Wage Juge. Yes, the three ships. Yep. Yep. And I'm glad to see, we had a feeling we was going to see her again. And I'm glad now that she's on the ship and it's interesting. Now, did you see the shade, though, that Mariner gave Jen? Yeah, she just walked right past her, didn't even acknowledge her. She went right up to her friends. You mean Jennifer? She walked right up and gave Boimler a huge hug right right off the Uh bat. I mean, she was hugging everybody. Except for Jen. Yeah. Yo, I don't blame her. I'd be pretty pissed, too. Well, I mean, it probably hurts a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean... Boimler stayed with her. Tendi Rutherford stayed with her. Jen didn't stay with her. Nope. No. And Jen was just like so quick to throw her into the bus. Uh-huh. It's like when somebody comes up and he says, you know, Patrick's not fit to sleep with animals. And I defend him and says, he sure is. <laughs> what? <laughs> I haven't slept with you. Is there something we don't know? <laughs> I have not slept with you, so shut up. Oh, oh, dang oh. oh, but yeah, that was that was funny. That was a good return. See, I did it facing you, not behind a closed door, mm-hmm. <laughs> like Bumler did. What do you guys rate this episode? I'm giving this at least a nine. Yeah. Oh, very much. Yeah. Yeah. I, I gotta say nine. I would have to say it gets a hard nine for me. I agree. I'm a nine. I, too. I'll give it a nine and a couple. Uh, photon torpedoes because they Ooh. threw some photon torpedoes in too. I, I love that sound effect. And that's what I hear coming out of your quarters when you're having a good time. Man. <laughs> Here it goes. Oh, <laughs> the chief came. <laughs> oh my. Oh my God. Talk about a full spread, huh? Oh my oh God. God. Okay. Um, <laughs> how about you, Heather? Do you give it a nine also? Yep, full nine. I love this. Okay, then you know what? Since you gave it a nine, it's your turn. Yay! Okay, moving on to the next episode. We are doing Star Trek Prodigy Season 1, Episode 11, Asylum. First aired October 27th, 2022. Act 1. Fuck paperwork. You're none of the above. Our favorite prodigy crew is saving an almost extinct whale from a swarm of bloodthirsty mermaids by being fish bait. After the whale eats them, they are stuck in the tummy of the monster. Zero beams the group out of danger and relocates them into safer waters where the whale could rejoin her boyfriend and have kiddos. It's been weeks since we last saw everyone, and they have been racking up good deeds in order to try and win favor of Starfleet. And, you know, possibly not be punished for stealing their ship. Our gang finally approaches a Federation comm relay station to turn themselves in and hand over the protostar. They walk into an empty station, not sure where everyone is, when they accidentally interrupt Frex doing something. Our crew tells him... Oh, sorry. That, that wasn't what he was doing. I don't know why that got you excited. Go ahead. <laughs> keep, your, keep your hands off your tool. <laughs> Our crew tells them their story and requests asylum. They want to join Starfleet. Okay, let's get you into the system. 
Our prodigy crew goes through the scan one at a time as it identifies each of them. Jankum is a Tellarite, Rock is a Bricar, Zero is Medusa, Murph is a Melanoid Slime Worm, Wynn is an unregistered species, and finally, Dal. Frex immediately gets a pop-up message saying, Report to Starfleet Command. Starfleet knows what he is. At least someone does. Yeah, but he's still, it was classified though. The question is, do they really know or they just need to get a hold of him? Yeah, but it was classified. Yeah. They didn't say what he was. They I just, mean, they just might want to check on his starship's warranty. Yeah. Mm. So, <laughs> that was kind of, and that guy is definitely frazzled. He reminded <laughs> yeah. me of somebody who was like trapped behind with no company, no nothing. And he was left alone all by himself on that big giant place. He was an expecting company and he was in the middle of jerking off and he didn't think anyone would come in. With his hair. Oh God. Did you guys know that Frex is the first Denobulan in Starfleet to be featured since Phlox in Enterprise? Is that what he was? A Denobulan. I didn't realize he yep. was a Denobulan. I didn't know what he was. I oh was, my goodness. That he did not look like a Denobulan to me. Might not look like it, but he's classified as a Denobulan in I didn't memory see alpha. Webby. That would make sense because being alone on your on a on a place like that, a Denobulan by himself. They're yeah. social creatures. I mean, come on. Yeah. How would you stick one of them by themselves everywhere? Yeah, right? with just, none of his yeah. wives. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, my God. Poor guy. So, yeah. Right? But they came on, and they're like, we have to. And I got to give um, Dell a lot of credit. He was just up front. Well, he's come yeah. a long way since the first show. What I used to couldn't stand him. <laughs> you know, yeah, but, I got to admit, I did not notice that this episode. I didn't even think about that. He's getting yeah. better. He really is. Yeah, he really is. He's taken, he's matured. And the he whole even thing, hugged Janeway. I know. That was that so was, cute. That was in the awkward for a hologram, which is really strange. Yes. Even <laughs> Janeway's was, like, okay. Yeah, he's he's <laughs> really getting together on there. And they finally identified what, you know, well, now we know also of what Murph is. <laughs> I what, love that. Does that relate to a previous episode? Yes. So a melanoid slime worm was only mentioned one time in the entire Star Trek like universe. Mm -hmm. And it was used by Zaldin Rondon to insult Wesley Crusher in The Next Generation Season 1, Episode 19, Coming of Age. He compared Wesley to a melodone slime worm as wow. an insult. Wow. Okay. So that's a deep cut. Yeah, yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. But I still don't know what the hell it is. It, <laughs> I've never came across one. Now I'm going to have to understand because we have one we on our ship. We need one on our ship. Yes. We do yes. have one yes. on the ship. Yes. That was the one that removed the hot dog filters. Oh, the translator is going to need some work. Yeah. The universal translator. I mean, I could have sworn we had one until I saw that trail leading into the captain's room. I know yeah, he's on the ship now. I'm saying we need him on here like as permanent, you know, crew members. We need him um, on here for the entire. He needs to be a permanent fixture on this ship. We need to get the what you call the translator to work fine because I introduced myself and welcome aboard. And he looked at me. <laughs> and it's like, I have no idea. You just tell me what sounds is my name. <laughs> so I at least tell when you're calling me. <laughs> Did you guys recognize the callback to the space whales? Where that's from? Well, whales in general. Yeah. The, uh, Star Trek 4. Star Trek 4. They saved the whales. Yes. The voyage home. I, I liked that at the end they discovered, oh, it has a kid getting ready to be born. It's it's pregnant. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah. That was a very cool yeah, opening scene. It was. Very that beautiful, was nice. too. And you can see how the crew is really kind of working all together now. Mm -hmm. They are working as a crew. Yeah. yeah. They've got a whole starship and they're they're doing good deeds. I I really like that that's the thing they decided to do. It's like, we got this starship. Let's start doing good with it. That's a great yeah. thing. To build up our credibility so that's when he says we're heroes now <laughs> you gotta, you gotta admit, <laughs> you put, put yourself in frex's place it's like the all of a sudden these kids show up in this badass starship and they're like uh, a bunch of kids show up and they're like uh yeah we're kind of like heroes now and <laughs> we want to join starfleet and we're like well, what join like you have the ship and the clothes aren't you starfleet i mean he, why he should have you know hit the uh, the call for you know uh, backup like really quick well i love <laughs> I love how Frex is, uh, enjoy the final frontier, enjoy the final frontier, enjoy the final frontier. And Zero's like, why the hell does he keep saying that? Yeah, it's like our poster or something. What's the big deal with this final frontier thing? <laughs> now, a little bit of trivia for you. The person who voices Murph is D. Bradley Baker. Hmm. Who's so that? And she's a 60-year-old voice actor. Oh, cool. She so, does a good job. Yeah. 
So she's done a lot of voices with a lot of, she's done SpongeBob SquarePants and Avatar The Last Cold Bender, Gravity Falls. I was, Avatar The Last What? The Last Airbender. You said code bender. Airbender. Oh, yeah. I thought you said coal bender. Yeah, you no. did. Cool. Bender over? What? She also did American Dad, and she's worked with Scott Grimes and Patrick Stewart. And uh, to he, and he's worked with um oh, in Space Jam as well. So he's all over the place, does a good voice. But yeah, that was kind of strange. The guy is like being extremely helpful to the guy as Starfleet usually is. And we find out more in the next act. Act two. Da, 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 da. It's sabotage. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> that, was, that was Heather singing "Sabotage" for oh, the music. It's voice. sabotage. I love that. <laughs> that, okay. that sounded like okay. That, yeah, you're, you're, you're gonna get you're scared by the remaining Beastie Boys. I, I don't think so. Oh no, it's it not sounded, even close. It sounded nothing <laughs> like their song. It's not even close. It sounded like a morning no. kids show from like the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> mom, I want to get some sabotage. No, Billy, we can't get sabotage. We can't afford it. But mom, okay, you can have some sabotage. Yay! Dun, 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 dun. Okay. So Admiral Janeway is That's on the holiday. That's got to be on another T-shirt. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and she is re-experiencing her last moments with Chakotay before he sails off into the Delta Quadrant as the captain of his new ship, the Protostar. Janeway is interrupted with the news that Starfleet detected the Protostar warp signature. Fantastic. Let's go investigate. Meanwhile, our prodigy crew explores the station while Zero and Gwen head to the sick bay to see if they can unlock her memories. Frex tries to download the ship's logs, but downloads a Trojan virus instead, causing the comm station to go haywire before self-destructing. Dal and Jankum are viciously attacked by hot dogs, and Gwen nearly drowns in her med bay container. Frex blames the kids for the station's destruction and uses the only escape pod there is, leaving the kids to die. Dal sees the spacesuits and quickly comes up with a plan. We're going to jump! What could go wrong? Well, I thought when you wore a Trojan um, that you were protected. Yeah. Trojan horses? Trojan viruses? No, Trojan condoms. Yeah, the, well, you know yeah. what they say. A Trojan is uh, you have something dangerous hidden in something that looks not dangerous. So a Trojan condom actually works. So it makes it look non dangerous? Yeah, it works. That actually works. It's a Trojan. It, it, makes it makes sense. it look not dangerous. Okay. Yeah. But it was kind of cool to see Dell again showing his maturity. He looks at, he comes up with a viable concept. Go ahead and use, get the spacesuits. We can go mm -hmm. ahead and get into spacesuits. And that guy, that was a dick move, leaving everybody behind. Big time. Well, you just don't leave a bunch of kids. I don't care if it's just a crazy bunch of kids that showed up from whatever. It's like, you just don't leave them behind on a place that's blowing itself up. Come on, man. Well, now you know why Starfleet put him in the furthest, like, calm station there was by himself. Because he doesn't work well with others. <laughs> He's not good with others. <laughs> and to go with your everyone's earlier observation, when he accessed the ship's computer, the lower deck area turned red. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the scary thing about this is this is a comm station and it's got mm. a lot of armory for a comm station. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What if this, hits, this virus thing hits like a real starship or a real, you know, planetary yeah. defense system? That's fucking scary. It's well, amazing how fast a computer goes sideways when it gets hacked in the future it's pretty crazy how quickly it would happen now you don't even notice it it's not like they flash up a skull and crossbones on your computer they're just like you know they sneak in with your advertisements or whatever but now well, in the starship age no. what what how quickly a computer gets hacked you can't do anything i mean it's got to be a super super virus in order to get past the the firewalls yeah of the encryption in the future. well imagine that, that you find the one hole in the code to get through because you know how crazy code is these it's days. It's super sperm. That it finds that one hole. <laughs> <laughs> they, they super sperm for the computer. <laughs> well, go back to your original, like you know, statement. Like, why is a communication hub have all this to begin with? Also, why did they have a better sick bay than the Protostar, which is a new updated ship? Like, wouldn't the Protostar have a better? No, because it's a, it's a pro, it's an experimental ship. It's not designed to have the latest and greatest. With, it has uh, just so much space to put stuff in there. 
And oh, it had yeah. a better armament than the Starbase in Lower Decks. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is a little bit ironic, isn't it? Yeah, so it was strange for a little outpost. Isn't unless, it ironic? It must Don't be a think? dangerous <laughs> section that that outpost was. It's supposed to be the furthest relay. So it makes you wonder where it, it, where the relay, how far and what system that was nearby. Well, so if you really was, want to communicate with the comm station relay, get some phasers on that sucker. That'll communicate pretty fucking quick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wonder whatever came of that project we were working on earlier, number one, with the quantum communication, where it, it would make relays obsolete. Shh. That's a Section 31 thing. Shh. Oh, that's right. Ooh, we were supposed sections. to talk about that. Yeah. So Oops. changing the subject, um, did you notice how when at the very beginning of this section, Chakotay is going off into Delta Quadrant with a protostar. Yeah. They actually christen the ship with a wine bottle and they show the wine bottle like they shoot the wine bottle out to the ship and it breaks. Did you guys notice that that was the same wine bottle from Picard Chateau? Oh, that was pretty cool. They couldn't afford the good stuff, so they just used Picard. They couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> they just they just used what Picard now, gave him. Everybody thinks of Picard's like, oh, he's a winery, he's a captain in Starfleet or Admiral, or, and, and yeah, he's got the winery, and, and everybody's got the Picard wine. But I have you know, man, that's probably not the best stuff on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know they have that at the conventions. They have a guy there that sells bottles of wine f- that uh, are labeled from Picard's chateau. They're not going to sell you the good stuff. They sell you the cheap stuff. Or more well, because a lot it's a of fan those, related. <laughs> a lot of those people are never going to be drinking that wine. They're just going to have the bottle. They won't unopened know. It's more forever. about what it's worth than what it tastes like, right? No, it, pro tip. <laughs> you can buy the really cheapest vodka, like Trader Joe's Vodka of the Gods. You get the cheapest vodka you can and then run it twice through a Brita filter and it'll taste like the real expensive stuff. Wow. Hack. Life hack. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but, I mean, I'm just going to christen it with like a, a six pack of Corona. Be done with it. That'll work. That'll work. I don't know. I wouldn't win waste Corona. I would it's get like that Valentine's counts. Ale or, or something <laughs> like that. But it was definitely, I, I forgot where we were in this section. Remind me. Oh, that was the beginning where we saw the flashback with a, a real Jane. Oh yeah, that's it. Thank you for saying yeah. that because the illustration sucked. <laughs> <laughs> At least in my opinion, I did not like the way they had Janeway Jacote look. I didn't like I mean, that she Lower walked through had, herself. No, I thought that was that really was disconcerting. Weird. Yeah, and they had a better animation, and I thought for Lower Decks, this one it just they tried to go realism, and to me, it just kind of failed. Oh, I thought it was interesting. Was was this the scene they kind of snuck us in Chicago way back at the convention? They like showed us a snippet of Prodigy footage, and it was I think it was this clip. Well, yeah. They had the know. clip of Murph metamorphosizing into something, and we never saw what. No, oh, no, yeah, that was Chicago. That is. That's a different one. No, I'm that talking about way back clip. Chicago. Remember oh, yeah, Chicago? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They showed yeah. us the, a little bit of this, and uh, yeah. everybody who's a JC or shipper, like you heard, you know, moistening happening. Yeah. Because they were freaking out because, oh my God, Janeway and Chicago, and they hugged. Yeah. They don't normally hug. That was, that was like a first. Yeah, the, the illustration was a little bit different, but there's definitely something going there. Else, why would she be going through hell and high water to try to find Chicote? Oh, so they're together? So who knows what's going on with that? Yeah. So I guess we'll find out as the season progresses. Janeway also tells Dahl to take a leap of faith. And uh, she had to learn that lesson herself. If you guys ever saw Voyager Season 3, Episode 7, Sacred Ground, uh, the whole episode is uh, Janeway learning to take a leap of faith. Because he's got faith of the heart. <laughs> oh, God. And then she's imparting that lesson onto the younger generation. I you couldn't that use the really George cool. Michael song. You got to have faith, faith, faith. You got to have faith. You know, I just, it, because it was Heather's time. favorite song. So. Yeah. I can't stand that song. <laughs> yeah, one, one's more Trek related. <laughs> it's, it's a long time. Uh, yeah, I thought that the leap of the faith thing was an interesting concept for a Trekkie. It was. Because usually you look at, you know, look at it from the scientific point of view. And gather all the facts necessary to make a decision. But sometimes you do have to just fucking take a leap of faith. It's like, oh my yeah. God. They did a combination. A yeah, they did a combination of faith and science because Dal had the faith. Let's take this leap of faith. And then Rock had the science yeah. where Rock was doing the equations. It's which a good is connection. Next it's it was a good connection. Next section, both. but yeah. you know. So I like the way the, 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 the writing, though, is <laughs> they suggest the leap of faith and Zero's like, you sure that idea is sound? And then Dahl's like, well, there's no sound in space, so... <laughs> no one can hear you scream. 
Accurate, but not coherent. Yes. <laughs> I think another really sound idea is to get Heather to do the next act. Totally. Hi, Captain. Act three, Jason vibes. Scared that they are going to die, the kids follow Dal outside and take a leap of faith. While everyone screams, Murph is like the dog sticking his head out the window with his tongue flapping behind him. They just miss the protostar, but the ship catches them with a tractor beam. Gwen gets her memory back, but it's too late. The ship is a weapon, and it just took out its first target. Admiral Janeway arrives at the slave planet Dahl and Gwen escape from to find Gwen's father barely alive. He might have the answers we are seeking. That whole thing, I kind of liked the way they had rock talk. You see all the mathematical yes. equations. It's like a yes. meme, right? There's that meme, right? The, the lady with all the math equations. I don't know yeah. where that came from, but it's and like on the internet. <laughs> I love this show so much because the math equations they use are actual physics math equations for gravity. You know, I actually have the exact uh, what it, it's for if you guys are interested. There is a person that wrote it down and I took a screenshot of it. The person is Tanja Edder, T-A-N-J-A underscore E-D-E-R on Twitter. And he said those calculations are one, kinetic energy, impulse, gravitational force, gravitational constant. Number two, the Kepler's third law for orbital periods, orbital velocity, inelastic collisions and ellipses. And number three, escape velocity, acceleration, value of gravitational constant and projectile motion. All real equations for doing what they had to do. All you need to jump off of a ship. Are orbital periods like monthly periods? Dude, those are worse. Those are so much worse. Those are periods when you're in orbit and those are so much worse. You don't want to know about the math behind that one. I really (laughs) freaking love that they did that because when it flashed on the screen, I didn't think to pause, but I recognized only like maybe a third or a quarter of the equations that were flying across. So I'm really glad that someone took them and it's like, wow, they really did a, such a good I mean, job. It's kind of a show for kids. So it has to have a little bit of educational factor to it. So I had no question that they'd be using actual equations. I thought that was awesome. Yeah, But they, and they did a nice little kind of cliffhanger because when they go to leap and they're like, they're going to get to the ship. They're going to get to the ship. And they passed it. <laughs> what, what well, I like, I think... My favorite part of that is Murph had its tongue hanging yes! out. That was hilarious. Yes. Like a dog out I, the window. <laughs> I think when Rock was doing the calculations, she forgot to factor in the uh, how much force the fire and explosions were going to give them. Could be. And that's why she was off. I have to agree. And yes, I love Murph. I, I also love that the tractor beam was gentle enough to pull them across, yes. pull them a ship. I, I, I thought that's wonderful. It, it was just strong enough for a man, but made for a woman. That's <laughs> <laughs> for sure. They were using the sure brand of tractor beam. So it was kind of, and I think it was um, an, an unintentional side effect. I believe you two correct. She probably figured everything out with a normal leap. And not with mm-hmm. the acceleration they got from behind with that base well, blowing also, up like that. You have exactly, to factor in yeah. how much force you're going to kick off because you just can't calculate how, you know, no. jumping off of a ship. You no. know, there's a variable right there that you've got to be able to physically perform. And no. I love, I love as soon as Rock says, okay, we'll jump in 10. What if I'm wrong? What if I've made yeah, a mistake? time yeah. to think about it now. <laughs> yeah. it, it's just a nice subtle reminder to let you know she's still basically a child. Yeah. Well, I mean, a human. I mean, not human. Yeah. She's not human. She's a rock. But I mean, like human in a way that, you know, we have our doubts. We make mistakes. You yep. know, we and she do had all it. that. It's not always like Star Trek where everything is so perfect and you know exactly what you're doing and everyone's confident. There is a room for error. And I love yeah. that. The, the, there's an uncertainty. There's a variable. I mean, that's just the human factor or the... Yeah. Yeah, but or the non-human factor. Humanity yeah. factor. There you the, go. The, the only two people that would have survived, or three people would have survived if they missed it, would have been Rock Talk, Murph, and Zero. Yeah. But then they'd be like floating on forever, and what are they going to do after that? Yeah. So maybe not because that that escape pod is not going to go to the next system. <laughs> He's going to be floating forever. Yeah, He's going to be in that escape pod, being like, "Damn, they left me." So it's going to be interesting <laughs> to see. You know. I have a bit of a rant I have to go on. Oh, rant time. Where's the popcorn? Why the fuck 
is her father still alive? He has been dead for weeks. Like, how many weeks has this been? Why is he still alive? Well, that's the whole thing. And when I was looking at it and they pulled up and Janeway actually makes it there and his body is floating. And I'm like, not a good person to rescue. Yeah, no. you don't necessarily want to rescue a guy left on this planet. <laughs> no, that's they wanted to destroy all of Starfleet. You want to err on the side of caution. You have so to I'm, wonder about that. You you discover a place and just 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 completely destroyed, and you find the one survivor, and you have to assume that they're the victim. You don't. Let's don't wake do him that. up. <laughs> Maybe you should strain them first before you wake them up. That's just a or thought. put him it's in a uh, keep him in stasis region. for a while. Yeah. Right, throw him in the brig. Yeah, it's going to be Janeway versus him because you know he's going to try to take the ship over and everything else because apparently he knows Starfleet code. Well, he'll probably take and um, convince them otherwise. I, I see him putting on a front. Did you mm. guys watch the Ready Room after this? Yeah. I did. Mm -hmm. They talk a little bit about it and apparently Gwyn and her father are going to get back together. It's a very interesting thought. Uh, what I also was yeah. tripped out about the Ready Room is hearing the actress that plays Gwen's voice. I've yes. seen her. She's got an accent. <laughs> yeah. I was not expecting her accent. Yeah, that's the same. Yeah, I was surprised by I that was too. Like pleasantly surprised. Yeah. I was Good surprised. Actress. Yeah, I heard your photons, so I kind of yeah, know yeah, how I was, pleasantly uh, surprised like, oh you were. <laughs> yeah, so I heard that. <laughs> so, um, which reminds me, maintenance says that you have to stop doing that because the walls <laughs> in your cabin is pitted. <laughs> so they have to repair it. Okay, now for this episode, which was chock full of goodness, what would you give it, Heather? Ooh, this is hard because I'm comparing it to Lower Decks. Um, I have to give this an eight. It's very okay. good, but Lower Decks, I just, it's my favorite. I really love Prodigy, but Lower Decks is my favorite. And number one? I'm going to give it a nine because it was pretty damn good for a comeback episode. Oh, uh, that's this cool. And how about you, Chief? I'm going to say 8.75 because it was good coming back. And, and like when it ended, I'm like, oh, God, where's the next one? We got to wait for a week for the next one. Darn it. They got me all riled up because this is fun, adventurous excitement. Well, I have to say, after watching Lower Decks and then Prodigy hitting it from behind, <laughs> I think I'm going to put in uh, uh, at least uh, uh, the same as you, Chief, about eight and three quarters. So, Ooh. yeah, I think it was done pretty well. I'm not sure if your shuttlecraft is here again. Um, number one, you've been doing so much work on the other starships, getting them up wow. to code. So you've been I, busy. Yeah. So I really appreciate the effort and they haven't compensated us. So make sure you bring back some of that shitty pecan wine if they have it. <laughs> Or something like that to bring us back. I wonder if I'll get hate tweets for saying that Picard wines a cheap stuff. <laughs> well, in order for us to find out, um, go ahead and send us an email at the collective yeah. at starfleetunderground.com and we can get you a mailing address where you could send us a bottle to actually <laughs> critique and try. Yeah, I, I shouldn't crit critique the wine. I'm not even a wine connoisseur. So, you know, and you could perhaps hear us get drunk on air, which I'm sure is going to be worth it. Do you guys drink wine? Do you drink alcohol? What's your favorite uh, drink? I drink alcohol. Patrick does not. If he does, I will choke him to death. And, um, <laughs> and I don't know if Chief, are you a wino? I'll, I'll do shots. You'll do shots. Yeah. So I guess I drink wine. I'll drink anything okay. that has alcohol in it. I only like red wine. I am not a fan so, of any other wine or alcohol. Yeah. So and I'm I, trying I, I very hard not wine. to sing a UB40 song. Red, 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 red wine. wine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I love I love that in our time I don't have to worry about purple lips or purple teeth because they fix that. Just purple rain. Just purple rain. Yep. <laughs> you know, I never Does anyone want to know what next week's episode's called. Tea. Yeah, give us, give us, give it to us. Let sleeping Borg lie. Oh, yeah, Borg the sneak lie. peek they gave us in the ready room was like mm -hmm. oh, Borg cube. It's gonna be interesting. And then the, the week after that, the episode is very gay. It's all the world's a stage. Oh, cool. They have two oh, weeks so I think already. you mean theatrical, sir. No, I mean gay. Very, very theatrical. Same thing. Oh, okay. This is what we're going to see. I think what's going to happen is they're going to go up to the Borg, and the Borg's going to treat them like pack lids. They're going to be like, no, we're not interested. Go away. I would like to see a musical <laughs> with the Borg. <laughs> they're oh, going to go up to the Borg with, like, <laughs> jazz hands. Well, the Borg, <laughs> the Borg will all be um, like Crapworth. <laughs> you know, so that would be trans Europe. 
Express. And all the episodes are listed on Memory Alpha. For the all of them now. Yeah, they blasted oh, wow. out. They even put a little video out on the Twitters, the, the, all the titles, a little animation. Whoa. It's about time. Finally, you know, I they're told you. They're on IMDb, but they're on Memory Alpha. Yeah, there, there, I, there are some Star Trek corporations that like to release their show titles ahead of time so you know what's coming. I personally think it's because number one was working on your systems. They're like, how the hell did you get our computers running so good? You're like from the future. And Patrick just stared at him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very afraid of these computer systems. Uh, the, the way that that comm station just like switched for, to death mode just yeah, scares the hell out of me. Well, I, I don't think we have a HAL 2000 on our show. There's a, a free for view program out there called Dust. I don't know if any of you guys seen it. It's It's like to be in in apple tv and everything except it's all sci-fi stuff and one of their film shorts is about a roomba that decide it, it's going to protect the house <laughs> and so what happens this guy breaks in and and the roomba decides that it doesn't want him there anymore <laughs> and it attacks this guy <laughs> and it's funny because this guy hits him the guy freaks out <laughs> and drops his his heart pills the Roomba comes and sweeps it up. <laughs> <laughs> I see that. It. I see that short. That's good. You see that? It's uh, hysterical. Yeah. And then you see the Roomba gets a plastic bag. And then you see it come back with a knife. <laughs> and then you hear this chopping noises. And then you see it just drag this plastic yeah. body. And then it picks up all the, the stuff. And it's hysterical. And then the body is gone. And then the owner comes home and it's like one tiny piece of glass in the middle of the floor. And he looks at the Roomba and he's like, I can't believe you're not doing a good job cleaning. And then the Roomba, oh. all of a sudden, a red light comes on the Roomba. <laughs> oh. It's, so if you guys ever have it, it's free. They have a lot of really good shorts and they have movies that are free also. Some really good films. So remember, it's dust. Okay, we're going to get ready to tie it up. Thank you for joining us for a, a double-fisted episode of Star Trek. We don't do double-fisting in here. We don't? I thought It's hard did. enough to do single-fisting. We're not at a leather club. <laughs> um, That's a different holodeck program. We, so I got a crew member requesting a transfer to our ship there, Patrick, called Big Daddy. Should I deny it? Ooh, hello. <laughs> oh, let, me, let me view the crew, crew uh, the record and personnel file. I'll tell okay. you. Okay. <laughs> Oh, somebody got excited. Well, anyway, um, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, we'll be back next week. Where, if you want to hear the captain do a, a, a synopsis of the show, that's your time because it's my turn in the barrel. So I'll be doing it and doing it and doing it well. So thanks everyone for joining <laughs> us. Make sure that you look for us on the Twitters. We don't know what Musk is going to do, so I don't know how much longer we'll have a Twitter presence. Apparently, there's already been. Uh, a we will have a Twitter presence. <laughs> I can't believe how many people are freaking out over that. It just blows my mind. Yeah. Um, don't freak out about it until it gets to the point where you need to freak out about it. Well, this is true. Well, yeah. I mean, he I, did. First day, he fired the CEO and the CFO. And yeah. he let Kanye back on. Uh, he, okay. And, it, maybe it's time to Trump freak out. Too. It also has a block button, by the way. You can hit that little block thing that makes things happen. I already did block Elon Musk. There you go. You said you blocked and it's full of Musk? What? <laughs> I didn't quite hear the, so, somebody posted a comment that said, um, let all the people who, um, what do they call the, the people that dress up as, as stuffed animals? Oh, furries? Yeah, furries. Let all the furries talk about posting about Musk. And uh, that will do something about that. Comment. I'm just waiting <laughs> to what happens whenever there's something that's not regulated. Within a good week or so, it's going to be nothing but porn and porn bots. Yeah, if it gets to do that, then Twitter won't be usable and we'll go away. Exactly. That's the if, same thing. If, if they want us to go away, they can make that happen very quickly. Every platform has done that. And since he took it private, it's not being monetized. Like OnlyFans decided that, yeah, we're not going to do porn anymore. And then the whole thing almost imploded. And they said, yeah, um, our bad. You can do porn. <laughs> so and the same thing's going to happen with Twitter. They, they said it's going to be a wild, wild west where nothing's blocked. Be prepared for bats and balls and boobs. Well, and I see some of that anyway, but it's going to be a lot more. I think they were that's, talking. That's the Starfleet Underground account. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think they were talking about having different levels for people. So that way people could customize their experience. They could have a family friendly version. They could have a version where they just allow all the sex and dicks and vaginas they well, I don't mind there. the sex they and the have... dicks and the vaginas but uh, <laughs> the, the racism and the hate 
That's yeah. what we're That's concerned about. We thing. don't want racism yep. and hate. That's the only thing we're worried about. It's going to be that way until somebody sues them, and then it'll, it'll revert back. And that will happen because they already somebody attacked them. Well, there's there's a lot of money in it now, apparently, because yeah. somebody just bought the damn thing for $40 billion. Yeah, so we'll yeah. see how that's going to go. Okay, um, we've died off the end. We're supposed to be wrapping it up here, and we went a little further because I just heard the Patrick Shuttle dock with the ship. It was a satisfying claim. Monk. So please thank you for joining us. Make sure you come back next week and just don't have a great week, but make it so. And if you can, support the show by going to patreon.com slash Starfleet Underground. Lots of perks to choose from, and you might even like some of them. Starfleet Underground, beaming in to a podcast feed near you. Lock on to our website at starfleetunderground.com and send your comments and questions to the collective at starfleetunderground.com. Follow us on Twitter at Starfleet Under G and on Facebook and Instagram, we're Starfleet Underground. Um, Patrick, did you look over that cube blender? Because there's somebody piling through the shuttle, and I think that's Big Daddy. Um, <laughs> they scared the shit out of Dot because he's all in leather. <laughs> 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 Send that ensign over that way. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where the ensign is. Uh, she was looking the, for your I, quarters. I think the ensign left with the dot and leather. <laughs> if she's smart, that's strange. probably the best way to do it. <laughs> Bring a mechanical. Oh, shit. The light is still on. I got to remember to end this feed when it's supposed to end. Oh, no. Mm. Just a just a pro tip: lavender and lemonade candles. It's it sounds like it smells good, but no. Ew. Pro tip. Yes. From the pro tip. <laughs> <laughs>